Hey everyone and welcome to the S79 sewing studio. So today we're going to make this lovely comfy soft dog bed um, which also features a zip so you can actually remove the cover for washing. This is part one in a two-part series so this part we're going to make the cushion, the next part I'm going to show you how to make a blanket, an attachable blanket for your dog. Okay, so having decided on the actual size that you want your cushion or dog bed to be, um, it's best to draw it out on a piece of paper. You can use newspaper or any large piece of paper that you've got. Um, I've printed this out from my pattern. Um, and then what I did was I've actually rounded off the corners. This is entirely up to you. You can go for a box um, cushion or round them off. If you want to round them off, just take something round, um, put it up to the edge and you can just round off those corners. And remember, when you're cutting out your template, you need to allow half an inch seam allowance all the way around. So decide on the size that you want your cushion to be. Add on half an inch seam allowance all the way around the edge, and that's your pattern. You then need to calculate how deep you want your um, dog bed or cushion to be. So what you need to do for this part is to measure all the way around your template and that is the length that you need the sides to be. Obviously, they need to go all the way around. So what I've done here is I've actually divided mine up in just to make it easier to print it. I've actually divided mine up into two sections, which will be folded along this edge. So we're going to have a front section, a join at the sides, and then a back section. So measure all the way around your template. Add on your half an inch seam allowance to either end of that. And that is the that is the length of the edge pieces it will all become clear as we start making it so you should then have a template for top and bottom and a template for your side pieces this being the depth of the cushion with the seam allowances added on and then the length all the way around and don't forget if you're doing any joins you need to allow that half an inch seam allowance on the edges so now it's time to start cutting out okay so i have this um teddy bear fleece duvet that I picked up in a charity shop um, which will be nice and cosy um, for Cooper so I'm just going to um, take this and it's actually two different colours so I'm going to do the top one colour and the bottom a different colour so take your fabric and we need to cut two of these so we need to cut one for the top and one for the bottom so moving this out of the way So lay out your fabric. If it's got stretch in it, mine has got a bit of stretch in it, which is nice. Um, just make sure it's not stretched out and that it is actually lay nice and flat. And what I've done is I've doubled mine. It was actually a duvet, as I mentioned. So I've got a top and a bottom there. So lay them out nice and flat. Pop your pattern piece on top. Okay, and then you can either pin the pattern down and cut around it, or um, you can use some weights. If you happen to have um, a big enough table like this, then obviously you can use weights and a rotary cutter, which is a lot easier. So I'm just gonna put some weights, excuse my weights. <laughs> it's anything I can lay my hands on. There we are. So it's nice and flat and it's not gonna move around. And I'm just gonna cut this out now. Okay, and there we are. So I've cut out two pieces of the fabric for the cushion. So now I need to cut the side. So put this to one side for now. Just going to fold it up with my pattern and pop it to one side. Okay, so now it's time to cut out the side pieces. So for that, you need to cut two of the side pieces and on my pattern I've done it with a fold so just make sure if you've reduced your pattern size down that obviously you're cutting on the fold of your fabric so my fabric is folded on this edge I'm placing that up to the edge and I'm going to cut one out and then a second one okay so we have one side piece just checking it's all cut all the way through so there we are, we have one, one side piece. So pop that over there and we need to cut another one now. 
Okay, so what you'll have, what you should have now is a two pieces of fabric for your base cushion. So the top and the bottom of your base cushion. And then you should have the side pieces, which are going to go all the way around your bed. Now, this particular bed that I'm making is going to be a dog bed. So I want to put a zip in it. If you don't want to put a zip in it, that's absolutely fine. Follow the instructions along anyway. Just don't put the zip in it. Okay, so for the zip option, I've actually got a piece of continuous zip here, um, which I'm going to have. Now I'm going to make this bed so that this short edge is the front. And the reason, and the reason for that is because I'm going to do another video which shows you how to put a little, um, which shows you how to put the blanket cover on top so that it's like a little tunnel and that fits better in my house <laughs> that way in. So obviously you can make it whichever way around you want. I don't want the seam of this to be at the front. So it, my sides are going to go round like this and then the other piece will go round that side. So therefore I want the zip to be at the back edge. So I'm just going to measure how much I want. Now I want the zip to sit um, just around the corners because it will make stuffing it much easier. So I'm just measuring roughly around the corner and I'm going to chop my zip off there like that. So the zip will go around the back edge of the bed and enable me to stuff the bed properly. So once you've got your zip, um, you can measure and you can, you can either buy a zip that's the right size or a continuous zip like this and follow the instructions just to put the little zip pull on. Okay, so if you've never used, if you've never put a zip um, onto a zip head onto a continuous zip, um, I am going to do a little follow-up video um, just to show you how to do this. It's really quite simple. Um, I recommend using a number five zip, um, which is the slightly bigger one than the kind of standard one that you get in trousers, um, just because it's a whole lot easier to put the zip pull onto the zip. Um, but just quickly, make sure that the arrow of the zip, so the pointed end of the zip, is pointing down. Open your zip a little bit and you're just going to slide it onto one side of the teeth, slide it onto the other side of the teeth. So it's sitting at the top of your zip, just like that. So it's just sitting there, it won't go down at the moment. And then holding the actual plastic teeth, just pull down on the zip, pull down and just like that we're on. So it's nice and easy to do. I will do a close-up video of that next time um, and get that uploaded for you. So here we have the zip. Um, now what I'm going to do now is I'm just gonna fold the zip in half um, and just find the center. My zip pull is actually in the center, but I'm just going to put a little mark on the center just because I want it to sit central on the bed. So a little mark on either side of it. So it's on either side of the tape a little mark and then I'm going to mark out the center points of this section of the bed so the base pieces so to do that I'm just going to fold each piece in half and I'm going to mark this now you can mark it with a notch I won't see a notch in this um, because it's obviously very fluffy so I'm going to use a pen just to put a mark in there on the back there we are so i've just just so that you can see it, it's just for lining everything up it doesn't need to be hugely visible just make sure that you can actually see it when you're sewing there we are and again we need to find the center of these bits so i'm just going to line it back up and fold it into quarters again mark out these center points going to use something a little bit more visible it's in the seam so you won't see it afterwards I'm just using an ordinary biro now there we, are. there we are and then you need to do the same on the other piece and this fabric is quite dark so I'm going to actually use a clip to mark the center point because I won't see um, any of my marks and also it um, doesn't show up the chalk so folding it there again you can see these edge points here so I'm just going to pop a clip or a pin or a mark whichever works for you just so that you can see these points there we are cool so we have that 
lots of fluff coming off this into my table. Clear that off. Right, so the next thing is decide if you've done different colours, which is the top and which is the bottom. Um, obviously, um, I want my zip to go around the bottom section. So I'm going to, this is the bottom. I've got a dog, so this is going to be a dog bed. So I want to make sure that um, it's the darker colour that's on the top that he lies on. So I'm going to pop the zip. So we've marked our centre point. I'll put a clip on now, actually, that'll keep it nice and clear. And then the zip is going to be positioned with the centre of the zip at the centre there. So this is the back of my bed. If you're having the bed sort of landscape, if you like, um, make the back wherever you put the zip. So in my case, um, this is the front, this is the back, and it's the bottom of the bed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put the zip on, just pull the zip out the way, the zip pull out the way. So centres, marking up, matching up the centres. So whichever is the centre back of your cushion, put the zip face down onto your base. And I'm just going to clip this along here. So your zip should be face down. So if you like, the right side of the zip is facing the right side of your fabric. And just clip along like this. Now, when you come to the corner, you're going to have to stitch this around the corner if you've chosen to bring it around the corner. So just roughly clip it in place. And then as you start stitching, you can ease it round. There we are. So you can see now that the shape, the zip is starting to take as it goes around the corner. And I'm just bringing that round to there. we are so next we're going to stitch this in place so I'm going to stitch on this side so with the edge okay so I'll open up the zip so that you can see don't pull your zip pull off otherwise you'll have to put it on again <laughs> okay so we're going to start stitching the zip down um, as where we've pinned it so just making sure that the fabric is right sides facing up and the zip is facing down with the edge going along the raw edge and the zip on the inside so it should look something like this if you have a zip foot on your sewing machine it's a good idea to use it because it enables you to get nice and close to the actual zip which you're going to stitch nice and close to so just lowering that down remove your clips as you go and obviously I'm starting off on a corner so just sort of ease it so that the edge of your zip tape is lined up with the edge of the raw fabric Go forwards and backwards to begin just to lock it in place and I'm just going to pull this zip pull around a little bit and line that up with the edge of the fabric. So when you get to the zip pull if you take your zip pull back and out the way you can carry on stitching round just easing the fabric round that corner. And there you can see that the zip is in position, nicely sewn all the way around the edge there. So now we need to attach the side piece. So with your fabric layout right side up, we're going to take one of the side pieces. So just like before, we're going to fold it in half and mark the centre point. And again, it's easier for me to use clips, use pins or mark it with chalk or even cut a little notch, whichever works best for you. So we have the centre point marked there. Now we still have the centre point marked on the zip. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the fabric is right sides together. So right sides together. And we're going to take that centre point there and just clip it in place onto the other side of the zip and we're going to do just like we did before just continue clipping or pinning the zip along ready for sewing and you're going to take it all the way around to where the zip ends so where your zip comes to an end we're going to stitch all the way around to there and then stop and the same with the other side we're going to clip it all the way around and stop at this zip here and there we are, it's all clipped in place and ready to be sewn. So this time we're going to flip it over 
um, and just like before, making sure we're, we're only stitching the zip tape here um, to the side edge, or we don't want to be stitching anything to this base. And as you get close to the zip pull again, just do the zip up. It's a little bit more awkward because it's attached, but just slide the zip pull out of the way so that you can carry on. One thing that we need to do um, at the moment is obviously the, if you've used a continuous zip, um, the end here, um, if I pulled these, it would come apart and we'd have a problem with the zip. Okay, so taking a needle and thread, we're just going to anchor this together just by going in and over close to the edge just to hold this together so it doesn't ping undone and the same with the other end just a few times over really it's just to hold it all in place and just knot it off at the end by going through the loop once, through the loop twice, knot it off. And that will not come undone now. So now we have the zip in place and if we actually undo the bit where it was joined together, we can see there that the zip now is going to do up and sit on the bottom edge of our bed. So we now have the zip in place um, and it's time to stitch the rest of the side pieces to the base of the cushion. So next we need to take the other piece, which is to be the front of the, be of, of the bed, and we're just going to join this together at the sides now. Um, so take your short edge of the side piece, right sides facing up, and take the short edge of the other piece right sides facing down so that their right sides are together. You can clip these together like this just to hold it in place and then you're going to stitch along this short edge just to join these two pieces together. Now I've done a half an inch seam allowance so obviously if you've allowed half an inch in your pattern that's what you, your seam allowance needs to be. So do that edge and then I'm also going to do this edge so this other edge put together with this one and exactly the same just stitch along this short edge okay so that's now stitched together you can see there um, I've stitched the edge pieces and again here so what we're going to do now obviously the zips this side here so you can just see the zip going around there um, and the rest of the um, edging needs to just be put on now around here now if you're not doing a zip you need you can discard all of the zip section that we've just done and just attach the edging all the way around in the same way that we're doing it for this back section so for this section now we've got our markings for center and obviously this is also center so it's a good idea now especially if your fabric's got some stretch in it to go around and clip all of the center points around so this is already attached because the zip's here so coming along we've got the join here which marks the center of this section to my original center marking that I marked on at the beginning coming along okay remembering right sides should be together it should just follow on from your zip we go along to this edge and we've got the center that we marked with a clip and that needs to go to the center mark that we put on the base so that's the center there and then coming around we've got the center point that we marked here and again the seam here so popping that onto there and a clip on it just makes sure that everything sits as it should so then you can go along and just put a couple more clips on all the way around just to make sure everything is exactly where it should be ready for sewing so we're just clipping these raw edges together as you come to this corner here and you go around it's going to be the same as we did with the zip you're just going to ease this piece on 
around that bend. So it's a good idea to clip out your corners just so that it makes life a lot easier when you start stitching around. So there we are, that's clipped in place um, and I'm now going to stitch all the way around this edge here to the zip. Now when we start and when we finish, we're going to start and finish about an inch in from the zip, so it'll be here, and we're going to be sewing this side of the zip. So we're almost pushing, so the stitching is along here, we're pushing the zip out of the way and coming in an extra inch. Pushing the zip out of the way to this zip, so I'm going to pull it in this way and slide it down. So the zip is going to be on the wrong side and I'm just dropping that foot down. Now you might want to use clips or pins just to hold this out of the way and start. Make sure you do a forwards and a backwards just to lock that in place. And then as you come out from the zip, that's out of the way. And then you're going to stitch with your um, half an inch seam allowance all the way around the edges. And again, as we come up to the zip, you can see the end of the zip there. We've got the two raw edges. We're just going to push the zip out of the way and stitch the other side of the seam. So making sure it's still nice and centered. Come in about an inch and do a forwards and backwards to finish off. Okay, so that's all stitched and we have the base so this is the bottom of, of my bed and we have the sides all the way around now attached with the zip at what will be the back of my bed. So next we need to attach the top section. So make sure that your finished section that you've been working on is right sides facing up. Take your piece of top fabric and put it right sides facing down so that the right sides are together. Now remember where we marked the centre points of this um, side we're going to match the center points up with the center points of our sections. So center to center, making sure you have it the right way around. And then we're going to put the seam marked the center point here. So the center point here to the seam here and just put all of those together like that. So just like we did with the um, base to the sides, the top to the sides, we're going to just make sure that the corners are in the right place while it's flat on the table before we take it to the sewing. So once you've got it all clipped, it's a case of sewing it all together. And there we are, it's all stitched together. One thing I forgot to say before, which is really important, and I'm hoping you're watching this before making it, is before you stitch everything together, just make sure your zip's open a little bit, otherwise um, you may struggle to get into your zip, so just, just make sure that's open. And obviously you can reach in the hole and open up your zip fully. So we're done with this section now. Gosh, there's dust everywhere. Right, so there we are, and we can now zip up the base of it and that is how you make a, a box cushion. So now you can either go ahead and just put stuffing directly into your bed if you want to do that that's absolutely fine and then obviously you can zip it up. I'm going to make um, a lining which I'm going to stuff um, which I'm just going to use again. I've got some curtain lining um, that I cut out from some curtains from a charity shop. I love to upcycle, so for me, that's great. Use anything that you don't really want, cotton, anything like that. Um, and you're basically making it exactly the same as you made this, only I'm not going to put a zip in that section. You can if you want to, um, you know how to do it. So I'm just going to make the lining and then I'll be stuffing it. Right, so I've just very quickly put this lining piece together in exactly the same way that I did the outer piece. Um, but what I did want to say to you is, if you're not putting a zip in, um, I just wanted to show you the best way to do this. So exactly as we did the outer, everything's notched. I've put notches, um, 
because this fabric's easier to notch um, to show the center points. Um, so at the at the bottom at the back, so you want this tucked away, um, match up your center points. And I'm going to pop a clip on the center of that piece. Now I need to leave an opening in order to stuff this. So I'm just going to leave a space, not too big, but not too small either. So I'm thinking about sort of around about 10 inches ish and I'm going to put a couple of clips on there just to remind me if you want to double clip double pin draw a line just remember and now we're going to stitch this all the way around to the side pieces just leaving that opening there for stuffing it okay so I've stitched all around there and I've left the gap that I told you about if I can find it here so we have a nice gap here so that we can turn it the right way so turn it back in back to the right way out and we've got a gap here for stuffing this lining piece full of whatever it is you want to fill it with so you can use pieces of foam you could use um, cut up an old duvet or an old pillow, old cushions, um, and just stuff it full um, so that it's nice and comfy for your pet. Okay, so once you've stuffed either your cushion or your lining, if you're doing a lining, um, you've obviously got the opening that needs to be closed up. So, so you can either take a needle and thread and just stitch that closed. It's going to be inside, so it's a lining, it doesn't matter, it's not going to be seen. Um, or you can just fold the seam allowance from the gap and there and then flipping it over you can just get this under your sewing machine and just top stitch that close making sure that you're catching the seam allowance folded under which is how I'm going to do it so I'm just going to do that now and there we are so I've top stitched that closed so you can actually see there I've just a couple of millimeters in just stitched along there so the, the lining is now closed um, the stuffing's all inside so it's now time if you did a separate outer to put the outer onto your lining right so we've got the big zip so it's a good idea to put the big zip on because we've got to pull it all through There we are. And what we have there is a lovely, soft, comfy cushion for Cooper. So I'll take this home um, and see if he likes it. So thank you so much for watching this video. Um, this is actually part one in a two part series. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to make a removable blanket so that it will keep your pet nice and warm if you choose to make it into a pet bed.